Hello, YouTube. I'm back again. So my friends, meaning one of my friends, has asked me to return to the YouTubeosphere. So here I am, and I decided to come back with a lore video, seeing as I've recently finished the forest. And uh, so some people may not actually think that the forest is much of a story, but in fact it has a very, very deep story. Allow me to explain. A lot of the story comes from notes, mainly about Sahara therapeutics. Okay. Let's start from the beginning. On a plane, all good, Timmy to your side, but suddenly the plane crashes. One important thing to note is the error of the screens, as it, co as it kind of comes into play later. Right. And the red cannibal takes your Timmy away. And as you play, the first assumptions are that these are just your normal cannibals on normal peninsula. You know, all some strange freakish abominations running around like. Virginia and Armsy and a couple cowmen. But the main point main turn the main turning point of the story is when you start to find stuff from the Sahara laboratory. Um, the, the first thing most will find is the cargo manifest. Which I can't really find actually any info on so it's, it's kind of hard to read. But it does tell you that Sahara was here, or nearby here, and well, the ships crashed or something. But anyway, as you travel through the cave system, you may stumble upon this large cavern with just nothing but piles upon piles of corpses. But on one of them, you will find the Sahara keycard. And with this, if you make your way into the Great Sinkhole, well, there are lots of mutants down there, probably due to it being the entrance to the laboratory. Now we're here, I get to start talking about the lab. As you search the lab, you will find it fairly clean, but still in a state of disrepair, like something went wrong, but it wasn't too long ago. There are a few cavens and a lot of mess. But beside that, you will find a lot of children's toys and drawings, showing that there were plenty of kids here. And uh, with the milk carton on the boat and the uh, clipping of the two students in a cave, I wouldn't be surprised if the reason we don't find many human corpses around the island is either because they're eaten or they were taken to this facility and mutated. And so, this is where the mutants came from. So we now know these scientists created cannibals, which explains their lack of genitalia and their strange mutations, kind of unexplained. Like, in there you will also find corpses and sketches and kind of some more info about Virginia, Cowmen, and Armsies. As you make your way through the lab, you will find the obelisk. And inside, you'll find Timmy. So, we know the red cannibal put him in there. And if you found a science magazine, you will know that this obelisk was believed to resurrect the dead. But, the obelisk was filled with spikes. And as we soon learn, it is not the person in the obelisk that has resurrected. They are just a sacrifice. And in a nearby room, you will find the red cannibal with multiple crowns stabbed into his skull. And the crown box nearby says, Property of Megan. Now I get to talk about the Cross family. Starting with Megan Cross. Megan Cross is the child of Matthew and Jessica Cross. Who were both scientists at Sahara. 
This is all the stuff I found out just looking at the notes. Now, one of the notes you find is Megan's autopsy report, where it says where it says she has been viciously murdered. But if she died before the lab went out, who stabbed the cannibal with her crayons? We must look a little closer at the notes. Megan died from vertical cuts down her spine, which is very strange. What we are looking for is who reported the death. That would be her mother, Jessica Cross. And in another note, we find that Jess took out a restraining order against her presumably ex-husband Matthew. And another, we have an email from Jess to Matt with mega school picture and a single sentence. This is Megan's school photo. Please don't contact me again. And one of Megan's drawings features her father showing him as an angry, red-faced man with jacket teeth. So we can tell that Matthew was not a great guy. And I believe he brought Megan into lab as a test subject and she died. But the tests they were doing were secret, so it was filed as a murder. But I think Matthew tried to resurrect her using the obelisk, resulting in him being fired. But after he received that email, he released the mutants, knowing that the obelisk was the only way he could see his daughter again. So he became the Red Cannibal, the chief of the mutants. Which is why if you wear the red paint, the cannibals will get on their knees and praise you. But, the obelisk wasn't the only artifact Sahara dug up. They also found the power obelisk, which you find upstairs. And in another email between Matt and someone called Sasha, asking for an update on the other artifact, Matt, on the other artifact, Matt says that can bring down a plane. So when he releases the cannibals to get rid of the other scientists, he was free to work on his daughter. So he waits for a plane to fly past his peninsula and activates the power obelisk making some form of EMP, possibly causing the error in the screens. Then, he comes to the plane and steals your son away from you to be a sacrifice to bring Megan back to life. But, the machine didn't work as planned, and did bring his daughter back to life, but turned her into a monster, and she killed him, and so, and as you follow her bloody footprints, You'll find her in a large open room, and when you approach, you see she is playing with the toy plane, simulating a crash, then pointing at you. Then, she reveals her true form, becoming a three-legged monster, to be the final boss battle. But, after defeating her, you bring her back to the resurrection obelisk, and it will tell you that a life specimen is required. So, you travel up to the power obelisk, and copy the actions of the Red Cannibal, taking out another aircraft to resurrect the child, as Matthew did. And that is the story of, Ella, of Eric LeBlanc, his son Timmy, and the Broken Cross family, and a company known for skincare products, creating disgusting mutants, and playing God. Hope you enjoyed, as it took me hours to write the script, prepare the video, and the rest of the day to film and edit it. See you in the next video.